good day, my IBM friend. Jerry here again, this time with a 91st episode about some questions I've received about swallowing difficulties with IBM. If you haven't subscribed during an earlier episode, please do so now so you don't miss some important information being planned for future episodes. And also smash that thumbs up to advocate for IBM and this channel dedicated to IBM. My IBM condition has completely turned my life upside down, but IBM may also have taught me so much about surviving life and about myself. Although IBM has affected my swallowing, and I often experience some choking during mealtime, I also have learned how to live with it for the time being, and have actually put on a few pounds since using the feeding devices shown in the previous episode. Meals have again become an enjoyable time because the feeding devices counter the lack of arm strength to hoist food up to my mouth and the stress that accompanies that struggle. I've received some questions from IBMers worrying about their dysphagia, some legit, and some that may tilt the scale towards the myth side of coping with dysphagia and IBMer swallowing opportunity. The first question is about having someone in the house trained in using the Heimlich maneuver if getting food stuck in the throat area is the issue. The Heimlich maneuver is only useful if the throat's airway is completely blocked, according to Dr. Todd Levine at one of the TMA conference presentations. The Heimlich is um, for when food is blocking the airway. Okay, and so that, that is a form of aspiration, but that's really choking, because you'll die unless you fix that. So that's what the Heimlich is for. One, one thing to take home is if, you're, if, you, if you or your family member has problems swallowing, the thing to pay attention to when they're choking is are they making sound? So if they're making a sound while they're choking, leave them alone. Right, they will fix it. Okay. Um, when they're choking and not making a sound, that means that airway is completely blocked off, and that's where you do the Heimlich. If they are coughing, then they are able to breathe, and you would not perform the Heimlich maneuver on them. In order to do this, you stand behind the person and make a fist with your thumb pointing back against you, midline between the belly button and the rib cage. Grasp that fist with your other hand and pull back and up quickly until the object is expelled or the person loses consciousness and needs to be lowered to the ground to begin CPR. I vividly remember many IBMers describing to others the importance of thinking about every step they take with their legs to avoid a fall. It's just as important to think of, of food in the mouth and the necessary precaution required and essential before attempting to swallow your food. But just as fall prevention has its warnings, if your food gets stuck high in your throat, you'll need to know how to resolve that issue. With IBM, you may have to reevaluate and retrain yourself how to swallow with your dysphagia. One of the relearned behaviors a person who suffers from dysphagia might be best taught is by a typical squirrel or chipmunk. Did I just say from a squirrel or a chipmunk? A squirrel packs away some food in its cheeks as it consumes small portions of food placed in its mouth. An IBMer can do the same by setting part of the portion aside inside the mouth and masticating a small amount until it's turned into a thick soup consistency before attempting to swallow the smaller bolus of food. Just as I started swallowing, Tucking my chin down a little helps the food pass any lazy restrictions in the upper throat area, as well as closing off the trachea with the epiglottis. Um, we can obviously change um, the texture of the food if swallowing is too difficult. Um, this is a really important one. So as the tongue gets weak, um, it becomes very difficult to swallow. And probably one of the single best things that help is to swallow with the chin tuck. Um, so it just helps move that tongue, and it helps open... I choke occasionally during mealtime, but also realize that something lodged in one of the throat pockets doesn't prevent breathing. If you can still muster up some sound, the Heimlich won't be as much as some of the forced coughing might be the best bet. If a food particle doesn't want to come loose, I find that leaning over as far as possible with my caregiver giving me a couple of whacks between the shoulder blades will usually help dislodge the food pieces. We always have an empty cup ready to empty the unswallowed food, whether at home or restaurant. 
A cough is a protective reflex meant to expel things from the airway. A strong cough is a good sign you're actually not getting food caught in your lungs. A cough can also be a sign of aspiration, but it also can be a way a person protects themselves from aspiration. You might read that people with dysphagia shouldn't use straws. Straws propel fluids into the back of the mouth faster, so they sometimes cause problems for people with dysphagia. However, IBMers have a greater problem of lifting a glass to their mouth, so drinking with a straw often becomes necessary. A straw can make liquid intake easier for an IBMer. A drinking assessment by a GI physician or speech-language professional might be of assistance. Some other questions have been centered around the need for a feeding tube. Although there's probably enough to say about feeding tubes, to qualify it for another episode, I'll cover some of them here. First of all, a feeding tube decision should not wait to be put in the category of life-ending decisions. It is not. A decision to have a feeding tube installed should only be considered if difficulty with mouth feeding is causing weight loss and supplemental feeding through the tube is required to maintain a healthy body mass index. Food intake through the mouth is still doable even with a feeding tube installed. Uh, and um, then once I get a feeding tube, I can never eat again. Uh, and, and none of those things are true. Okay. A decision to get a feeding tube should be researched fully with your gastroenterologist and speech language pathologist. There's another myth. I won't be able to get out to eat at restaurants if I have a feeding tube. Wrong. When eating at a restaurant, select food from the menu that you seldom have swallowing issues with. The next bit of confusion centers around drinking water with your meal. Many dysphagic IBMers don't realize water can be some of the most difficult liquids to swallow. When water becomes difficult, try a thicker liquid such as milk or a half-melted shake to wash down your meal. I've heard a few IBMers say their dysphagia is caused or irritated by a constant flow of secretion from their nasal sinuses. Now, I'm not a physician, but I would recommend finding the cause for the sinus problem. Your sinus drainage may be able to be resolved with a prescription from your family doctor, remembering that inclusion body myositis is a skeletal muscle disease and should not affect the nasal sinus area. Since IBM is not fixable yet, we must take every action possible to fix the things that can be fixed. Fixing a sinus problem will ease the chance of it causing additional worries of it entering your lungs and the possibility of pneumonia. In my discussions with IBMers, I often get asked questions that I have not yet experienced. In those cases, I will try to talk through the issue with the IBMer to get them to think about how they can best resolve their current problem they are asking about. I hope this episode has helped answer a few inquiries that you may have about suffering dysphagia when diagnosed with inclusion body myositis. Above all, I recommend a visit to the speech and language professional and hopefully be assessed with a video fluoroscopic review of your swallowing problems. Thanks for joining us in this discussion. Swallow on, my IBM friends.